In this video, we're going to go over the epoxidation of alkenes. So let's start with this example. Let's react cyclohexene with MCPBA. So what do you think the major product of this reaction will be? MCPBA is a proxy acid. It has the functional group RCO3H. And a proxy acid, it looks like a carboxylic acid in a sense that it has a carbonyl group, but instead of a hydroxyl group, it has a, a peroxide group attached to carbon. So this is a peroxy acid. Now, MCPBA, metachloroproxy benzoic acid, it has a benzene ring. And attached to this benzene ring, there's a peroxy acid group, which looks like this. And on the meta position, you have a chlorine um, atom. So that is the MCPBA molecule. That's how it looks like. And so whenever you add a peroxy acid to an alkene, you're going to get an epoxide. So your answer should look like this. So that is an epoxide. So that's a simple way to convert an alkene into an epoxide. Now let's go over the mechanism for this reaction. So I need to draw the OH bond of the proxy acid facing the alkene. So it needs to look like this. And let's take this one step at a time. So the pi bond of the cyclohexene molecule will be used to connect the carbon and the oxygen atoms together. So I'm going to color code it. And so this red line comes from this pi bond. And then at the same time, the OH bond will break, connecting the carbon of the double bond with the oxygen of the epoxide. Now, the sigma electrons between the two oxygen atoms will be used to create a pi bond between oxygen and carbon. So that's this pi bond highlighted in blue. The R group won't be affected. And now there's one more arrow we need to show. The pi bond between the carbonyl group of the proxy acid will be used to connect the oxygen and the hydrogen together. So this um, bond between the carbon and the oxygen is no longer a double bond. It's going to be a single bond. And now we have a bond between these two atoms, highlighted in yellow. And so if you think about this mechanism, what's really going on is that an oxygen goes from the proxy acid to the alkene. So the proxy acid turns into a carboxylic acid because it loses an oxygen atom. And the alkene, it gains that oxygen atom, so it converts into an epoxide. And so that's basically what's going on here. This oxygen gets transferred to this molecule. And so that's how we can convert an alkene into an epoxide. Now, there's another way in which we can accomplish the same transformation. So here's the other method. So the first thing you want to do is take this particular molecule, cyclohexene, and react it with Br2 in water. So this will give you the halohydrin product. So it's an anti-addition reaction. And you're going to get a bromine atom and an alcohol functional group on a chain. And then in the second step, you want to add sodium hydroxide. And that will convert the halohydrin into an epoxide. So let's go over the mechanism of this process. So first, let's react Br2 with the cyclohexene molecule. So 
So the double bond attacks the bromine molecule, expelling the bromide ion, and bromine will simultaneously attack the double bond. And so we're going to get a cyclic bromonium ion. So bromine originally had uh, three lone pairs, but now it only has two lone pairs, but it has a positive charge. Now we have water in the solution, and so water has a higher concentration than bromide, and so water is going to be the main nucleophile that attacks this carbon, causing this bond to break. And so now we have this intermediate. And so the oxygen now has three bonds and a plus charge. In the next step, we need to use another water molecule to take off a hydrogen atom. And so we're going to get our halo hydrogen product. So that's the mechanism for the first step. Now what about the second step? So now we need to use sodium hydroxide, NaOH. So that's made up of the sodium cation, Na+, and the hydroxide ion, OH-. The sodium plus uh, ion is just suspected ion, so we don't have to worry about it. So let's focus on hydroxide. Hydroxide is going to take the hydrogen away because it's a strong base. And strong bases, they're basically proton acceptors. So now we have an oxygen with a negative charge. Now bromine is more electronegative than carbon. So bromine has a partial negative charge, and the carbon atom attached to it has a partial positive charge. And so the oxygen with a negative charge is attracted to this carbon, so it attacks it, causing the bromine atom to be expelled. And that's how we can get the epoxide. So that's another way in which you can get an epoxide. So you can react an alkene with a proxy acid, or you can react it with Br2 in water, get the halohydrin, and then react the halohydrin with a strong base. That'll close the ring, turning it into an epoxide. Now what do you think is going to happen if we take the epoxide and react it with HDO plus? If you react the epoxide with HDO+, the cyclo, the three-membered ring, I was going to say cyclopropane ring, but that won't be correct, but this three-membered ring is going to open. And what's going to happen is you're going to get two hydroxyl groups that, are, that have the opposite configuration to each other. And plus you'll get the enantiomer. So let's go over the mechanism for uh, that reaction. So I'm going to redraw H2O plus like this. So the oxygen of the epoxide is going to be protonated. It's going to grab a hydrogen from H2O plus. Now once it gets that hydrogen, now the ring is ready to be open. So water is going to attack a carbon atom that has or that's attached to the oxygen atom. And so this sigma bond will break. And so we have an OH group at the top and then an oxonium ion species at the bottom. So now the last thing we need to do is take another water molecule to basically take off the hydrogen. And so now we have a diol, a trans diol, plus the enantiomer. So we have a racemic mixture of products. And so that's one way you can use 
an epoxide. You can convert it into a trans dial if you react it with H2O+.